Good morning again, brothers and sisters. Today is the third Sunday of Advent, also called as Claudine Sunday. Please stand. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And with your spirit. Dear brothers and sisters in the Lord, today is Gaudete Sunday, the Sunday of rejoicing. As we draw closer to Christmas, the liturgy invites us to cry out to God in joy and gladness. We should rejoice because our salvation is at hand. As we make time for external preparations, we do also our best to be spiritually prepared. We heed John the Baptist's challenge of translating renewal of concrete needs. So we strive to be honest, to be kind and truthful in our day-to-day -day living. We prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries that us both mind our sins, making the Lord his pardon and his strength. Jesus, you came to reconcile us to one another and to the Father. Oh, have the
Seven meaning. Christian life is not without trials and difficulties, but Paul exhorts the Philippians to live in peace and joy because the Lord is close to his people. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, rejoice in the Lord always. I shall say it again, rejoice. Your kindness should be known to all. The Lord is near. Have no anxiety at all, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, make your request known to God. Then the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. His widowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary for the chaff will burn with unquenchable fire. And so with many other exhortations, he preached good news to the people. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Maganda umaga po sa inyo Maganda po nga, Father. Kung mapapansin ninyo, may palindi sa ating simbahan sa pagkakatong ito. Sapagkat ito ang kulay ng Gaudete Sunday. At Sunday that is dedicated to reflect 
the joy that only the Lord can give. P, sapagkat po kasi ito ay nasa pagitan na tulay ng lila which signifies penitence and at the same time, white which is the color of a solemnity of great joy. Neither white, neither white, so that's why the color pink is chosen for this occasion. Mapapansin natin sa ating mga pagbasa, mga katotohanan, na joy is something that is present in the church, in the hearts of His faithful, and everyone is called to joy. But the more important reason why that joy exists, it's not because there is an absence of problem. It is not because there is a, there are uncertainty. It is not because there are no concerns that we have to confront sooner or later, but simply because the Lord is present. The Lord is with us. The Lord always provides for us. And with that being so, the joy in the Lord is always our strength. The reason of our joy is the Lord alone. Nothing more, nothing less. And yet, as we see in the readings for today, the joy is not simply a feeling, but the joy also offers a challenge. In the letter of Paul to the Philippians, notice that the tone that St. Paul brings is very high strung. He is so joyful and he goes on to say, Let the joy of the Lord be your strength. I say again, be joyous, because the Lord brings his peace to his people. Now, when St. Paul writes this, the letter to the Philippians, he was writing in seclusion. He was writing in prison. He was writing in chains. He was writing with guards beside him. Imagine po sarili natin tayo ay nakakulong sa ating kwarto sapagkat may experience tayo ng COVID situation. And it can be very, very depressing. Very gloomy. And there's a great amount of uncertainty. Bawat ubo ang tanong natin ay, ito na ba yun? Pag tayo matindihan si Pwede na yung mga hinga, ano ba mga hospital na ba ako? O kaya naman ni, eh, matatapos na yan ako yung dalawang lingkong ito ng maluwalang kami, ng walang kung anong severe side effects. There's that certain uncertainty. And yet, si Paul is very joyful. Why? Because the Lord is with him, even in his chains, even with the guards, even in his seclusion. The joy of the Lord is his strength. But no, St. John will give the same point. By the time St. John was talking about the great joy that the coming of the Messiah is imminent, notice that St. John the Baptist points to the fact that joy is not merely a feeling, but it's also a way of conversion. It offers its own challenges. Three groups of people come to St. John and says to them, the first group, he says, Think, what shall we do? And the multitude was answered by John, saying, He who has two coats, let him share with him who has none. And he who has food, let him do likewise. My dear friends, there is joy in sharing. My dear friends, there is joy in generosity. No one is ever so poor that they will have nothing to give, they, that they will have nothing to share. But equally important, no one is so rich that they have nothing to receive, that there is nothing that they will ever want. Now that communication is very, very accessible, yes, we may not be able to give material things, but we can always find time. We can always make time to renew connections with one another. Not 
Nandyan ang Facebook, Nandyan ang Messenger, Nandyan ang Viper, Nandyan ang Whatsapp, and what have you. Hindi ka puukusan ng connectivity. Pauukusan ka lang ng creativity sa dami ng posibilidad na pwede natin pinigil. You can always make the necessary connections. People, more than ever, need appreciation. Libre lang yun. It's not too much to ask. Libre lang naman ang show of support. And people need it the most nowadays. People also appreciate no, attention. And that is something that we are always capable of giving. Our only limitation is our sense of willingness and our sense of creativity. Dear friends, there is joy in sharing. There is joy in generosity. The second group offers another reflection that St. John goes on to give us. And he was asked, no? the text collectors came and said, Teacher, what shall we do? St. John responds to them, Collect no more than what is appointed you. Ang minamahal na kapatid, ang top collection ko, nag-exist na na mahabang panahon. Ito is an example of another top collection. Nung panahon nila ang mga dumano, na sila sa kanila ay nabumuno, inatasan na lahat ng kanila na sasakupan ay magkaroon ng paningilan ng buwis. Kung ang buwis ay 100 pesos, sabihin natin, at ang kolektor ay humingi ng 300 pesos, sigurado yan kung itagasan ito. Yung 200, kanya na yun. Yung 100, para sa kanya yan. And notice, this is something that joy challenges as well. There is joy in honest living. There is joy in honesty. There nothing calms the spirit more than a life of transparency. Sa harap ko ng salitang honesty, there is no such thing as political colors. There is no such thing as political party. Honesty is for everybody. And if everyone is capable of that and are called to such. So my dear friends, imagine po ninyo, ang sarap patulog that everything is planchado. Na wala tayong pinulogong mga tao. Tapos ang sarap ng feeling na yun. Ang hirap po ang sinumaling. Pag nagsinumaling, kailan mo kang daan kung ano ang sinabi mo at kanini mo sinabi dahil pag nagkamali, lagot ka, patay ka mo baka. We can always say, I didn't say that. Ito o, oh, nakaplay pa pa, kompleto regatos. And we will only be called red face. My dear friends, there is joy in honesty. There is joy in honesty. Because transparency will always be our best defense. So much so that if people will lie in our face or lie about us, people know how honest we really are. And our honest living is a reprimand to every lie that can be thrown to everyone of us. There is joy in honest living. There is joy in honesty. May we choose to be so. Finally, we have St. John being asked by a third group of people. And it is now the soldiers who ask, And we, what shall we do? And he replies, Rob no one by violence or by false accusation, and be content with your wages. Nothing disrupts peace more than greed. And so in out of what happens, these people, for example, the soldiers, were notorious even in their times to do violence and do false accusation. And my dear friends, we don't need to be soldiers to be tempted with this. Every, every now and then, we will always be bombarded no, with social media. Social media has its usefulness. It has its good points, 
if you want to disseminate, disseminate information for free or fast, use social media. Wonderful. If you want to gather information, you can also use social media. It's also helpful. The social media can also be weaponized. It can be a weapon of disinformation and a weapon for misinformation. It's a double-edged sword. But for our end, as Christians, it is also our task and our duty to promote the truth. It is our duty also as Christians to verify the truth. So, number one, verify the facts before we post. Or more importantly, verify the facts whenever we choose to repost. Unfortunately, if lies get up, being spread far and wide, people may end up thinking that they may end up being the truth, whereas it is not necessarily so. So for our part as Christians, it is also our duty to scratch through the information, to dig around, to ask, to verify. It is part of our duty, my dear friends. After all, no? if we live as people of truth, only with truth will there be true peace. No wonder there is much confusion, because so much untruth is being so. And one way to do so is to verify always the facts. Maraming search engine, we can always verify. Maraming paraan, we can always double check. Yes, it will take time. But what is important is that we do our part. So my dear friends, there's joy in promoting peace by following the truth. By discovering the truth. So my dear friends, inspired by the example of St. John the Baptist, may we learn to find joy in the Lord. The joy that is brought about by sharing and generosity, the joy that is brought about by honesty, the joy that is brought about by promoting truth. Please Christ for the profession of faith. I believe in God. The Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amid the difficulties of life, let us now pray to the Father that we may hold fast what endures the love and joy only found in Him. In joyful hope, let us pray. Lord, bring joy to our hearts. Lord, bring joy to our hearts. Fill with the spirit of knowledge and fear the Lord, all our church leaders, that they may exercise their authority in the church with joy, peace, justice, and love. We pray. Lord, bring joy to our hearts. Through humility and love, may our government leaders set aside their selfish desires and petty grievances so they may lead the people entrusted to their care towards unity and peace, we pray. Lord, bring joy to our hearts. As we go through this pandemic, may our Advent longing for the Messiah find us watchful in prayer and active in works of charity, especially to those who are sick. We pray, Lord, bring joy to our hearts. Heal whatever needs healing in us, memory, emotions, body and soul, 
so that our lives may be found always worthy to praise you with joy in our hearts. We pray. Lord, bring joy to our hearts. Welcome with joy our departed brothers and sisters into your kingdom for all tears, sickness, and anxiety are wiped away. We pray. Lord, Lord bring joy to our hearts. Let us pray for the urgent concerns of our community and our personal intentions. We pray, Lord, Lord bring joy in our hearts. hearts. Lord, may you truly bring joy in our hearts. In your mercy, grant the humble pleas that we may be found worthy on the day of Christ Jesus. Where true and lasting joy is found. He who lives and reigns with you, the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. and the sacrifice of yours. Be acceptable to God, the Almighty God. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. May the sacrifice of our worship, Lord, we pray, be offered to you at season, to complete what was begun in sacred mystery, and powerfully accomplish for us your saving work through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For you assume that his first coming, the loneliness of human flesh, and so fulfill the design of your love of God, and open for us the way to eternal salvation. That when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest. We who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to go. And so with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and the powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end they do not leave.
Nik uli dito ang Diyos Yesu ni Pray. Ang sabi ng Diyos ni Pray, ang sabi ng Diyos ni Pray, ang sabi ng Diyos ni Pray, ang sabi ng Diyos ni Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and had willingly to his passion, he took bread and gave it thanks for you. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and was more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For it is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which should be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of God. The mystery of faith. Remember, Lord, your church is spread throughout the world and bring it to the fullness of charity. May the branches our Pope, our sister, our bishop, and all the earth city bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of their resurrection. Don't have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all we pray. That the Blessed Virgin name, Mother of God, the Blessed Apostles and all the saints, who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may be able to be co heirs of eternal life, praising the word of God for your Son, Jesus Christ. Through whom in, with him and with him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor be yours, O God, Almighty Father, forever and ever.
Lord Jesus Christ, who said, Your apostles, peace, I leave you my peace, I give you. Look not on the mercies, but on the faith of your church. My gracious friend, your peace is in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord will be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer to God the sign of God's peace.
Let us pray. We implore your mercy, Lord, for this divine sustenance may cleanse us of our faults and prepare us for the coming feast through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Hold up your hands and pray for God's blessing. May the Almighty and merciful God, by whose grace you have placed your faith in the first coming of His only begotten Son, and your first coming again, sanctify you by the radiance of Christ's advent and enrich you with His blessing. Amen. As you run the race of His present life, may He make you firm in faith, joyful in hope, and active in charity. Amen. So that rejoicing now with devotion, for the believers coming in the flesh, May you be endowed with the rich reward of eternal life, and it comes again in majesty. Amen. And may the blessing of the Almighty God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, come down upon you and remain with you always. Amen. The Mass has been offered. Go in peace, love, and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.